can zoom in now and have a closer look at what's going on. This map from NASA shows us the fires burning at the moment. But to understand how it became so dire so quickly, we have to go back a few days. So this is the situation on Thursday. You can see a cluster of fires in the centre of the island here. And this shows what's happening with the wind on the same day. Crucially, wind gusts are relatively slow at 17 kilometres per hour or 11 miles per hour. And they're blowing the fires away from the coastal resorts here in the south. But on Friday, things start to change. The fires, you can see, haven't grown too much yet, but there is a really significant shift in the wind direction and the speed of the gusts, fanning the fires now down towards the south. When you look at Saturday, you can see exactly what's happened as a result. A huge increase in the size of that wildfire and even faster gusts of wind, making those blazes extremely difficult to bring under control. This satellite photograph from Sunday gives you a sense of just how large the burn area is. It has been an unusually bad period for Greece as a whole. As this chart indicates, the blue line shows the average weekly burn area over the last 17 years, normally peaking in mid-August. But this red line shows what's happening in 2023 with a well above average burn area much earlier in the summer season. The Mediterranean is especially vulnerable to wildfires because mild wet winters allow vegetation to grow and then hot dry summers turn that vegetation into very effective fuel. And this isn't just a problem restricted to Greece. This is the European Commission's fire danger assessment for today and tomorrow. And you can see just how widespread the risk is. It will remain that way until the temperatures start to fall. And that isn't due to happen until later this week. How many Brits are currently on roads? Well, it's difficult to be absolutely sure. The figure is between seven and... ..10,000. And obviously the first point I want to make is that our hearts go out to people who will be on their holiday suffering a very anxious and worrying um, experience. What about Corfu? Do we know how many are on Corfu? Um, when, we're not sure how many are on Corfu, but the position in Corfu is, is very different. The fires are not taking place in residential areas or holiday areas. And although some people were temporarily moved, they've now been sent back to their accommodation. So the position in Corfu is, is very different from Rhodes. What's the Foreign and Commonwealth Office doing as far as, as stranded Brits are concerned? On roads. So we've immediately uh, deployed a rapid deployment team of six of our own officials who are experts in these matters. They're deployed to the airport in Rhodes, as long with four uh, Red Cross uh, experts too. So they are on the ground. Um, and uh, it's important to recognise that only something like 10% of the island of Rhodes is caught up in this dreadful uh, disaster. And there's been a very uh, good and strong reaction from the local services, um, uh, from the Greek uh, tourists and other emergency services. And we're doing everything we can. At the airport, uh, we're able to help with anyone who's got uh, difficulties in liaising with their tour operator. And also, of course, if there's any difficulties on documentation. I was about to ask you what happens because we're hearing from people who've had to flee their hotels um, and get into boats, banana boats, whatever they were telling us about and reading about in the papers this morning. So that would by necessity mean they've left their documentation, passports and the like back in the hotel room. Can they get home? Yes, yeah, so that, that's, that's one of the key reasons that we've deployed this forward team to the airport to sort out all those sort of problems of documentation because as you say that is exactly what, what happens. People leave without uh, the necessary uh, documents, sometimes they leave just in the clothes that they are wearing. So uh, our team there will be uh, sympathetic and supportive in trying to make sure that they are able to get home. Are you expecting the situation to get worse before it gets better? You know, it's very difficult to say. It, literally, it depends on which way the wind blows and how fiercely it blows. Um, but we will do everything we can to make sure that people who have had a dreadful experience on what should be a happy time on their holiday will do everything we can to look after them in all ways we can.
Would you fly to Rose on holiday at the moment? Well, I think I probably wouldn't, but I would definitely take the advice of my tour operator, uh, both in terms of roads, but also in case there were other locations which they could offer me away from where these fires were taking place. That's one of the problems, isn't it? Because we've been hearing from Brits who say that um, companies like Jet2 and Chewy, um, they have literally left them in their hotels without any guidance or advice at all. That's not appropriate, is it? Well, I think the tour operators uh, can and should be as close as possible to the people whose holidays they have organised and who've paid them for doing that. Um, we, we will uh, look into any problems and issues, of course, but with seven to 10,000 people there, as of last night, there had only been 20 specific requests for support from the British authorities, and all 20 of those we've been able to help. What sort of help? What's needed? Well, I think it's people arriving at the airport or people wanting to know what they do when they get there, what they should do in respect of documentation, what they should do in respect of their tour operator. And as far as these anecdotal stories are concerned about these tour operators leaving people to their own devices at hotels, not acceptable. No, but I'm, I'm sure that the tour operators will be doing everything they can now. They may have had a slow start, but I'm sure they'll be doing everything they can to support the people whose holidays they have organised and who, after all, have paid them uh, for that support. Uh, just looking at your advice, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office advice on the website this morning, saying, in the first instance, please contact your airline or travel operator who can assist you with return travel to the UK. Do you expect that advice to be changing any time soon? Well, if it's necessary to change it, then, of course, it will. But, but operators are sending aircraft uh, to roads, which are um, basically either empty or nearly empty, so that they will be then able to bring people back. Um, and therefore, I think in terms of any return to UK or any alternative holiday arrangements, it is right to consult your tour operator. Mm, any uh, likelihood that you might be updating the advice? So, if, if necessary, we will certainly update it. But at the moment, how often that is the advice. How, how often are you looking at that? Is it on an hourly basis or...? All, 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 all the time. There's a, as I said, there's a forwardly deployed team on the ground at the airport, but they are in constant contact with the Foreign Office here in London, and if there is any need to change that advice, we will do so immediately. On a wider topic, the fact that we can see what's happening in Rhodes, we can see what's been happening in southern Italy, we can see what's happening in Corfu, um, does that make you perhaps think again about what we should be doing as far as... Um, this government's climate change plans are concerned? You know, the government has uh, got the best reputation. It's had the most effective response to net zero of any G7 country. We are ahead of most of the targets which we set, but we've also had an expanding economy at the same time. And the government's really got to get the balance right between doing the right thing to tackle climate change, which is, as these events horrific events show, uh, absolutely real and live at the moment and deteriorating and getting worse, uh, but also to try and defend our constituents and people in the UK from rising prices. And therefore, the government has intervened uh, to do that, both in terms of energy costs and, for example, during the pandemic, but also, as the Prime Minister makes clear, his number one task is to get inflation down, and we saw some encouraging figures in that respect last week. OK, and then you see somebody like Michael Gove, the levelling up secretary, flanked by the Prime Minister later on today, who's going to urge a, a slowing down in green planning targets. I think that you can do both. I think you can pursue net zero, which is critical, both for our country and for the planet. But you can also protect people from rising prices. And that's what we did, for example, when the electricity prices went up. The government stepped in to defend families and individuals. So, so it's not an either-or. You can do both. And under this government's leadership, we will. Does the result in...
Uxbridge last Thursday night into Friday morning point to voters wanting a slowdown in um, your green message? I think it shows that the ULA scheme that uh, the Labour mayor had put in place was the wrong scheme. It was the wrong time and it was conducted in the wrong way. But I think overall what Uxbridge uh, shows is that those who've written off this government in the next election have done so prematurely and that the next election is wide open. Sigh of relief Friday morning? Um, I, I You're went allowed to, to smile a little bit there. I went... <laughs> It was better than the alternative. <laughs> yeah, you won one, but only just. Yes, I think uh, that if you look at the betting odds and what the pundits were saying, that we were uh, all set to lose all three, and therefore it was... Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.